Easy website creation one and one Send emails from your website. This video shows how to set up an email link in your one and one website so visitors can send comments to you. It also shows how to use Gmail filters and labels to collect your incoming website emails to separate them from your other emails. You are watching a Tom's Tech Notes video. This video is in a playlist and playlist video should be watched in order. To open the playlist, hover over the video window, click the circled eye at upper right. Scroll the pop-up if necessary, then click the link. On a mobile device, tap the screen to show the eye. There are several ways to set up email links in a one-on-one -on -one website. We'll use the easy way, which uses features provided by the one-on-one -on -one editor. You'll be able to insert lines informing the user that he can click on the line to send an email comment. After the user clicks the link to send a comment, this page appears, and this is the page that the visitor to your website would actually enter the comment. And I'll show you exactly how this page works, and then we'll show you how to set this page up on your website. And after we set up the page, then we'll show you how to set up the links. First of all, you need a message to explain to the visitor what this form is for. And it starts out this way. I appreciate feedback from visitors concerning the website and the associated YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't have an associated YouTube channel, obviously you would get rid of that part. Did you find what you wanted? Did you notice any errors? Would you like to suggest any changes? So I want to encourage the visitor to make comments. Now enter your comment below. Press Submit Comment. And optional is, if you would like a response, please enter your name and email address. I will only use your email address to reply to your comment. That's because some people might be hesitant about putting their email address on paper, as it were, and sending it to someone. So this is an assurance to the visitor that I will only, that you, the website creator, will only use the email address to reply to the comment. And then, this, this comment, to return to the previous page, press your browser's back button, tells him how to get back to the page where he clicked the line to send the comment. Now the way this works, as it says, optional, name and email are optional. So to send a comment, you don't need to fill in a name, you don't need to fill in an email. All you have to fill in is the comment, because it won't send an empty comment email. So you can you can put a name here and it won't it won't really error check it just any string of valid looking letters. Sometimes you run into spell check errors, but you can put anything in there that looks like a name or nothing. You can put anything in here in this optional box that looks like an email or you can put nothing there. If you put anything here, it must have the format of an email. It doesn't have to be a valid email address but it will have to have a format like numbers and letters with an at sign and then maybe uh, gmail.com or yahoo.com or something like that. It has to look like an email. If, if it doesn't, it'll give you an error and it won't send it. Now the comment, as I said, has to, there has to be a comment here to be able to, to submit the comment. So I'll just submit a, a first of all, I'll try to submit an empty, com uh, empty email with no comment. It circles the comment box with a red rectangle to show that that's the field that's an error that has to be fixed before it can send the email. So let's go ahead and send it. Remember what this looks like because the form will disappear when you send the email. That's why there's a button here to reset the form. So once I send it, it, it displays this message here. Thanks for your comment. To return to the previous page, press your browser's back button. And that's the same line I had up here because he's looking here because it just displayed this after he sent the uh, comment. To send another comment from this page, just press reset form. You have to do that because the form's not visible anymore. So if you press reset form, the form reappears and now the, the visitor can send another comment from this page. He also can use this reset form button if he starts to fill in one or more of the fields here, 
And he said, I'm going to start all over on this comment. Just hit reset form, and it's gone. Now, the way it works is all the reset form does, it, it reopens the same page. This page here that, that shows all the, the form and everything. And that, that causes the form to reappear. And next, we'll show you exactly how to set this form up and how I set it up and how you might want to change it if you want it to work a little differently. Here's how to set up the page that actually sends an email. We'll, we'll have to create a new page. If the Pages and Pop-Ups column is not visible, click Pages icon in the left column. We're going to use a blank page. And we'll go ahead and call it Send Comment 1 because I already have a Send Comment. I'll put a title widget at the top. I'll use large title. I typically use the form that doesn't go clear across the page. And we'll call it send a comment. And we'll save it. We'll need text explaining what the page is for and how to send a comment with it. I'll use a text widget for that. I'll increase the size to 16 points. But I think 14 points a little too small. You might even want to go to 18. Type in what you want at the top of your page before the actual form. We'll put the form in before we explain this text because it makes more sense with the text. So the form's a widget. It's called a contact form. So start to type it in the search box just to see it looks, it looks like it's enough. Contact form. Put it here. If you remember from the example, I did not have a, a title in the box, so I'll get rid of that and get rid of it right here. Form title. I did not have a phone field there. That's because you want to encourage people to make comments and a good way to discourage them is to ask for their phone number because they'll figure oh he's going to call me up and bug me to death so get rid of the phone field the way to get rid of a field scroll if necessary in this pop-up and opposite form click dx now we want to make the name and email fields optional so to change the characteristics scroll if necessary Click the name. Now, it is required. Uncheck this box to make it optional. Everything else is fine. Email field is required. We want to make it optional. We're going to leave it set to type email. That means that if you want, you can leave the box blank. But if you want to fill it in, it has to be an email format which is basically number and letters followed by an at sign, followed by something like yahoo.com, gmail.com, and so forth. So that one's finished. Now we want to make the message field required because we don't want the visitor to send a blank comment. So here, go ahead and click message and check the required field box. That's fine. Now there's a couple of other changes we need to make to the form. We need the form to send an email to our email address because the one and one people are going to send the email. It's not the person actually filling in the form and sending it. It's the one and one website. So you have to go to submission, submission recipients, type your email address in here. I'll type my actual email address. That other one was my website's email address, and I don't really use that one. I use my uh, ordinary email address for everything, and I just use filters to organize incoming email. So tomwallacegs at gmail.com. And if you want to use that email address to send me a, an email or a comment about this website, 
outside of the website, feel free, or a comment on one of my YouTube videos. So that's that sets where this the one-on-one -on -one website will send the emails when this form is filled in. So we'll go ahead and do this. Now there's one other thing we need to do, and we can do it at any point. We can come back and edit this form again later, but what happens is when you send, when you use this form, when you fill it in and you send a message, the form disappears. So if you want to send another email on this same page, you have to make that form reappear. The simplest way to do that is just to open this same page again. And so we'll just set up a button that'll do that. So the, the user won't have to go over and find it in the, in the left column and check it to, to open the page again. We'll just have a button here. And we'll go back to the widgets. And we'll bring a button in. And we'll just call it Reset Form. We will jump to an existing page. It will be the same page we're on now, which is in comment one. And we will call it Reset Form. And then we'll save that. Now we're almost done. There's only one more change to make. When you send an email, it, it the form goes away and there's a standard message that appears when you send a successful email. That standard message basically says, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks, thanks for your email, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Well, we're only going to get back to the sender if he filled in his email address. So we don't want to promise something he's not expecting us to promise. So I'm going to change that message. So we'll, we'll open the uh, contact box again for editing, the message that will be provided when the email has been sent comes from the submission column and submission actions. Here's the message. Thanks for contacting us. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. As I said, that's not exactly what I want to say. So I will edit this to put in what I like it to say, and I'll, I'll explain what, it, what, what it's for. It won't appear because we haven't sent the message yet. Now when a successful email message is sent, it'll say thanks for your comment. To return to the previous page, print, press your browser's back button. Or to send another comment from this page, press the reset form button. And that's here. So this pretty much says what we want. Now we'll go ahead and change it and we'll send an email and we'll show you, show you what happens. There's the message that it now provides because of that change we just made. And again, that, that tells him how to get the form back on the screen. Just press the reset form button. So we'll do that. And there's the form. When the one-on-one -on -one website sends a, an email from a contact form, like the one we set up, it will show in your inbox as being sent by form-processor. Now those messages will clutter up your inbox unless you separate them out. In Gmail, you do that by creating a filter to assign a label to emails that are from your website and not display them also in the inbox. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. Remember, the sender is form-processor. So we'll open the settings, click the gear wheel, click settings, filters and blocked addresses. We're going to create a new filter. Messages are going to be from form-processor. We'll go ahead and create it. Now we want to skip the inbox when the filter catches a message. We're going to remove it from the inbox. We want to apply a label to it and it will be a new label. And we'll just call it from website. We won't bother to nest it under another label. Now one other option, it points out that there is one email already received that matches the filter. If we don't check this, it'll only filter future messages. It won't filter the one that's already there. But we do want to filter the one that's already there. 
And now it'll catch the present messages and any future messages that match this filter, which means they're from form processor. And we'll go ahead and create the filter. Okay, the email has been read, so it lists the label, but it doesn't show any unread emails in it. But that clutters up the list. So what I'll do is I'll change this label so it'll only be shown in the list if it contains unread emails. And the way to do that is pretty simple. I'll just go down to Manage Labels at the bottom. I'll find from Website. And notice it's set to Show and an option is to set it to show if unread. So if I set that option, it'll only show it in the, the left column listing if it contains unread emails. And that kind of doesn't clutter the, the uh, column as much. So we'll do that. And we'll go ahead and go back to the uh, inbox. Now the from website Label is not shown here because the only email it contains has been read. Now, if you still want to look at it in the future, in spite of the fact you've read all the emails, you can click more and you can go find it below here. And you can still look at it from website. And there we are. And it's not in bold. That means it has been read. So that's how to set up a filter to prevent cluttering your inbox with the messages from your website. If you liked my video, please like it and add a comment. If you subscribe and request email notifications, you'll be notified when videos are added to the channel. To visit my channel, click my name, Thomas Wallace, or my photo. Here's how to visit Tom's Tech Notes later. The address of the website is tomstechnotes.com. And to find the YouTube channel, just search for T-O-M-S-T-D-A.